Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, Rob and I were very keen to organize a Q&A uh, on a subject that we've been talking about now for something like six months. Um, firstly, to do with uh, closer cooperation. Um, we've recognized that with the advent of the 600 kilo opt-out from EASA, we had a genuine opportunity to do things on joint basis. Uh, what we don't want to do with our aviation community is kind of split into an LAA 600 kilo opt-out and a BMA 600 kilo opt-out. So having uh, come to, together on that particular point and decide that really we, we know much more jointly about what should be done than separately, that actually why not take a little bit further and talk about what other things we could cooperate on. Um, and we've had several discussions since. Um, the BMAA have uh, brought together uh, members of a working group. The LA have done the same. And we've had a few meetings now where we've talked uh, in the round about everything to do with what we do for our members. And of course, the subject of merger has been discussed. Um, at our last meeting, we went through uh, some finer details about, you know, are we generally as a working group um, heading in the merger direction, or are we sticking just with the stuff we might cooperate on? And at the last meeting, we were all um, agreed that actually it's the merger we should be talking about now. And we discussed such items as where would you, where would you locate, how would you locate, what sort of services could we do better as a joint organization, uh, we've looked at the financial information from both organizations, and concluded that actually there's a substantial financial benefit to coming together as a joint organization. But, and it's a big but, the main um, outcome of that last meeting is we really do need to talk to the members now and just get a view of what they want to do um, before we go any further. Because frankly, um, it's in our Articles of Association. It's absolutely right that the members should have a say. And uh, obviously this, opportun this opportunity here now is to talk about what questions you've got in the back of your mind. Uh, we may have answers, we may not have answers, but that would help to inform what will then become a consultation uh, that we will do with all of the members of the LAA and all of the members of the BMAA. So once we have the results of all of that, the working group will be in a much better position to steer a course forward. Okay, um, Rob, would you like to say a few words? Uh, if you don't know, I'm Rob Hughes. I'm BMAA chairman and have been for a few years now. My confession is that I fly an LAA microlight. <laughs> and I'm an LAA member as well. So my question is, how many LAA members are there in the tent? I presume all of you are members. Could you just raise your hands quickly? Okay, how many are BMAA members? Lots of you. And how many are both? Okay. My perspective on this is, and it's the same as Tim's, I know, does this benefit the pilot? If at the end of our discussions, is the pilot going to be better off, then we go ahead. And if there are casualties on the way, there will only be one chairman, so one of us is going to disappear. That's fine with me, so long as the pilot is better off. So part of this discussion is to find out what is important to you, what's worrying you about this, so that we can address those problems and hopefully come up with some solutions. Thanks, Rob. Yes, and uh, you know, there's no preciousness here on this platform anyway. So uh, I think really, unless there's anything burning, let's get on with a, a few questions, Malcolm. So who yeah, would like okay. to ask the first one? Um, just a bit of form. Obviously, this is a very, very important beginning to discussions, and we're recording this. Must let you know that. Secondly, it would be great if you could, before you answer the question, just give us your name and whether you're BMA or LAA or both, because we can then review the questions and the answers at a later date. So anybody got a question burning? Hands up. There's one. Um, Adrian Jones, I'm a member of both organizations. Um, the I'll put the microphone here then. <laughs> it's working, is it? Yeah. yeah. Adrian Jones, I'm a member of both organizations. Um, Mostly BMAA, I own a shadow, so BMAA aircraft. Um, my concern would be the BMAA taking a back seat because it is a smaller organization, uh, fewer resources. Um, 
And uh, the last time we went through this, it uh, became apparent that the LAA were interested in not a merger, but a takeover. Um, and the other thing is that things like SSDR I don't think would have happened because the LAA were against that. Yeah. Um, it's been a, a boon, I think, for the... It's been a boon, I think, for the um, BMAA. So th those are my main concerns. Okay, uh, well, I'll start off on that one. Um, as far as we were concerned, both Rob and I, right from the get-go, uh, we talked about a merger of equal partners. And uh, we've talked about what a future governance arrangement might look like, and that will be equal partnership. So there is no suggestion here of any takeover or anything else. Both organizations are financially sound, so the merger of two financially sound, org sound organizations is not going to introduce any aberration as such where suddenly the, you know, there's some debtors on one side that haven't been satisfied or whatever. You know, we're confident that actually the, the combination of the two organizations will work well. Um, in terms of the scope, we will still absolutely respect uh, all of the types of aircraft operating under a BMAA regime, as well as we will with all of the LAA aircraft. So we don't see anybody missing out as a result of the merger. Rob is Adrian used to work for the BMAA. Right from the very start, um, I asked him, merger or takeover, which would it be? And he's been very clear all the way through, this is a merger. LAA is currently a bigger organization in total membership, and it has more money in the bank, partly because it has more members. We, the BMAA, are absolutely fine, thank you. We're not needing to be bailed out. We're doing very well indeed. We've got money in the bank, not as much as you, but we've got plenty. We own a, a building probably worth somewhere in the region of £400,000. We don't have a high rent bill. We've got just as many aeroplanes flying as LAA, more or less. I mean, I'm being generalistic here. We've got a whole range of programs, some of which LAA have, some of which LAA doesn't. We have an instructor network, and we write the, the syllabus, and we oversee panels of examiners and instructors, which LAA doesn't have. So it's two different organisations that are very similar. They do a lot of things the same or in very similar ways but we have strengths and LAA have strengths and the basis behind this discussion these discussions are can we bring those strengths together to benefit you I don't want it to be a takeover and I know that my members would never vote for a takeover because they would be worried that their interests will be lost so let's look at the makeup of the aeroplanes at the moment there are different focus interest groups such as vintage or whatever it might be uh, vans, if you are the Flyer magazine editor. The single um, biggest sole interest group <laughs> post-merger would be Flexwing Microlite. So if you think about the, the new organization, and it would be a new organization with a new name, a new website, um, taking the best from, and currently everything from, but the best from both organizations, and the single biggest group would be Flexwings. So we wouldn't lose our influence or our protections of this. And we have expertise now in both organizations, because you keep poaching our staff, uh, who know about Flexwings as well. So yes, that's one aspect. But there are also, I mean, I've walked around this airfield this morning. There are hundreds of aeroplanes out there, all different types. And, and I personally, being an LEA member, would be really happy to see that in one organization as well. We look abroad. We aren't living in a bubble, uh, in particular, uh, an example that Tim showed to me of the Australian uh, Flying Association, the RAA ORS, um, and they are similar in structure to what we would plan to be, which is um, one body with a whole range of different interest groups. But this is definitely not a takeover, be just because one's got more money in the bank than the other, because the other has other strengths to give as well. Any other questions? There's one at the back. If I go to this one first, because uh, he put his hand up first. Thank you. I'm, I'm Graham Clark from the LAA Bristol Strut. Have you been able to specify uh, advantages, efficiencies that would accrue from a merger? And uh, you know, have you specified, or can you see any disadvantages? Uh, so uh, the working group have examined both um, 
uh, organizations, finances, and balance sheet, and all the rest of it. And uh, there, are no, uh, there are no skeletons in the cupboard. There are no issues. So as far as we're concerned, um, both organizations could merge quite successfully. Um, I've deliberately, uh, you, I don't, I'm not sure if you've read the article in the Light Aviation magazine recently, but I've deliberately um, cautioned against hanging hats on any particular numbers. I think that would be a hostage to fortune. But both sides are uh, convinced that uh, actually coming together will give us much better value for money for members, and we can therefore look at other services for members. Okay. My name's Nick Hart. Um, I'm a member of both organizations. Um, a bit like Adrian, I fly um, Air UK, um, fly Paramotors, and I've enjoyed of the two organizations, the BMA, much more because of the fun element. I always see the <coughs> LAA as the old guard, the guys who kind of uh, regulate flying, and I see the BMA as very much the inspiration for young people and fun flying. My big concern is that if the uh, control is watered down by the LAA of BMAA activities, the SSDR and so on, it will end up with a very dull, uninspiring organization. And I think the LAA needs the BMAA more than the other way around. Thanks, uh, well, that's a, that's a <laughs> challenge, isn't it? Um, I, I, I agree with you, though, but actually what we look for in the LA is some of that inspiration, that passion, that getting younger people involved that Grant talked about. That is one of the benefits of actually coming together. Now, there are lots of things about the LAA which are uh, very sound, very good engineering organization, and so on. So it really is, as Rob says, merging the really best bits of both organizations and with um, governance in place, that is a partnership between two organizations, there will be no dilution. Rob? Uh, there was one at the uh, over there, yeah. Um, it's an interesting um, perception on your part that BMAA is a, a lively and more active associate. I completely agree with you, of course I do. <laughs> uh, but seriously, we have um, outreach programs for children. Um, we have uh, builder plane projects. We have three in build at the moment, which go into colleges. Um, children from 16 up to 21, that sort of thing. And we've got a lovely new exhibition trailer that we um, send around the country to non-aviation events as well. We've just been to two country file events, and that is all aimed at bringing in young people. Why would we stop that? Why would we suddenly say this is a bad idea? And SSDR, why would we stop that too? Um, in, at this airfield, there's a company in the far, in the far corner, Flylight, and they build a, an aeroplane called the PB. I'm not going to advertise Flylight anymore and the PB. Um, it's, a, it's a single seat flex wing microlight and they keep selling them because people want them. Why would you try to stop that? The purpose of this is if you want to go flying and you can go flying for somewhere between sort of 12 and 15,000 pounds for a brand new aeroplane, that's to be encouraged, surely. Great. Next question. Okay, uh, John Mangan, Suffolk Coastal Strut. Uh, LAA member, um, how do you see the um, reaction or embracing even of the CAA to this merger or even EASA? Uh, it will come and, um, well, we all have experience of such things. Over to you. Yep. The head of GA policy is in the tent. I watched him eat a sausage hot dog this morning. <laughs> He's very strongly in favor of this. And I know from talking to others that CAA look upon it favorably. I don't know if Mark wants to make himself known. Not working today. This is Mark Shortman, who's head of GA policy for uh, at the CAA. You can. Oh yeah, you can hear me. I, 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 I'm here. I'm an LAA member, by the way. Forty years, just so anybody knows. Uh, Red Hill Strut and Southern Strut. Um, but I'm not a member of the BMA. Forgive me, Rob. I just. But I'll save money in the future, maybe. Um, so, so, but it is an oversight, Adrian, you're, you're quite correct. And Deddington never found me out after all these years. Um, so to answer the question from a reg... So if you were asking the regulator, if you're asking me, what do the CAA think of the regulatory aspects of a merger, then, of course, we have no really official view whether you merge or not. It's entirely up to the membership, guys like us in here, as to how you do that. From a regulatory perspective, 
the BMAA and the LAA have standalone A826 organisational approvals, which gives them some very wide-ranging privileges. Um, on that note, by the way, anyone that mentions SSDO, SSDO was an initiative supported by the LMA, but, but actually set up by the CAA, so nobody can change the SSDO rules. So don't in any way think that that is in any way under threat, because it isn't. Um, but the, the merging of the two approvals, I see, and I've said this to the two chairmen, the two chief execs, and anyone else that cares to listen to me, I don't see it as a big issue. I see some very distinct regulatory advantages in, in, in a merger. Um, but again, don't let me lead any witnesses because it's purely a democratic process it's with all these other factors of finance and membership and benefits to the pilot owners, which I fully support. So hopefully that gives you a, an insight from the regulatory side, as it were. But if you've got any more questions for regulator, then come and see us in the CAA market over the other side of the airfield. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions there? I'm sure there must be. Burning. Here's one. Uh, Mick Broom, BMAA. Um, why a merger now? Uh, why not uh, put a, a, a program together to enhance the uh, cooperation between the two organisations? and get that all working and and so it's apparent to both uh, members that the thing is working and it's a good marriage uh, before actually uh, going and get married. Right, this all started with Tim being a, a relatively new chairman to LAA, inviting me to Tuweston for a chat, for a get to know. And we were talking about all sorts of things, motorbikes and goodness knows what else. And we talked about corporation, particularly because I'm interested in 600 kilo. And it was actually Tim who mentioned the M word first. And I said, oh, that's interesting. You know, we've been through this before in 2007, 2008. That led me to talk about other cooperation in other ways. And I spent the next six weeks trying to work out how could we cooperate more closely without merging. And I struggled to find an answer. If you take the hearts of our two organizations as the tech offices, the things that get us flying, you could merge those. But then why wouldn't you merge everything else? You could merge membership services, but why wouldn't you merge everything else? Something that Steve Slater said to me this morning, um, uh, LEA chief exec, was if the result of all of these talks is that we choose not to merge, for whatever the reason might be, then at least we can find some ways of cooperating more closely in the future so that these talks, this process that we're going through, does have benefit in the end. Why, m why should we merge now? Why shouldn't we merge now? We personally won't vote until May next year, so the process won't be finished until May next year. That's plenty of time, that's a long amount of time to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Yes, thank you very much. I mean, and uh, you know, the plan is that from an LAA point of view, we'll be asking your opinion formally anyway in the next uh, few weeks. And uh, we'll certainly have uh, a lot to talk about at the AGM, uh, which I think is on the 20th of October. Um, but it, it is very much, as Rob says, you know, why, why, why not, as opposed to why. And I'm particularly struck by a lot of what Grant Shapp said to us earlier about the passion in aviation, trying to get uh, things going. An organization that's in five figures carries more clout, I think, than one with uh, or two separate organizations with uh, a lesser number of members. Um, he talked about the airspace challenge, and I'm very pleased to hear that uh, he's not getting, he's not letting some of these things go as perhaps his predecessors might have done. Of course, we have to respect the fact that there is a civil aviation industry in this country, but nevertheless, uh, I'm a great believer that we can actually create win-wins for both the commercial air transport sector and for general aviation. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, and an organization which now comes together in, under a single banner and ca has the resources to respond to consultations, to make sure that our views are being felt uh, maybe in the Department for Transport, but certainly in the CAA, um, where you know, we, we have a long record of close cooperation and collaboration with the CAA. I wouldn't like to see any of that go, but nevertheless, having one joint organization will make a big difference in my opinion. Next question. Uh, any further questions? This one at the back. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, my name's Andrew Kennedy. I'm LAA. I started off as a BMAA. Uh, if it wasn't for the BMAA, there's no way I'd be here now. Um, so my question is, what's the new organization going to be called? 
That's a good question. <laughs> um, well, we, we've had we've had talks about this, um, but again, it's one of those things where we we need to bring this uh, to life in terms of asking you what that new organisation might look like. Um, there are various options uh, that we've had a look at, uh, but really. I don't want to go down that avenue right now because that's not, that's not the reason why we're talking about a merger. The reason why we're talking about a merger is all about those, those benefits uh, which I described in the uh, Light Aviation magazine as mass, momentum, and finally money. Um, all of those things are, will actually make the merger really successful. I, I see the name would be the icing on the cake. And if I was to say a name today, I don't want people's lasting impression is, oh, I don't want to be called that. So I'm going to ask you guys, what do you want? Let's have some suggestions. Let's discuss them at the working group level and then make a decision on that basis. I've had lots of suggestions. One's the BMLAA. Um, one that I thought was really good was the PFA, Popular Flying Association. Apparently yeah, there's yeah, yeah. <laughs> still some stationery hanging around. Um, but ultimately, it's exactly as Tim says, it's the name is less important. I entirely agree with you about the marketing aspect. And one of the first questions I had with Tim during our, our motorbike discussion was, um, you have to accept there will be a new name to this organization. We haven't yet worked out whether it will be a new organization or whether we'll sort of make a shell of one and absorb into the other for all sorts of reasons. But it will be a new identity because it's two separate and distinct associations joining together without one taking over the other. Um, we have got an idea for a name. Um, it's not yet fixed, so we're not going to say. Um, part of this is we'd like you to tell us, you know, are you, are you ready for a new name? Because you changed your name only, what, 10 years ago? Um, we, we don't mind. We've gone through this. We're quite happy changing our name. We often get people saying, drop the word microlite anyway. And it's a split. Some people love it. Some people don't. Um, but absolutely, it's, it's the message that we give to our members and to the outside world. We're one joined organization. Uh, question at the back. Give us feedback. Part of this standing here in front of you is, what do you think? This is how we find out what you think. Um, Michael Welsh, Southern Shrat, but I'm a member of both the BMAA and the LAA. Um, this new organization is going to be big. It's going to be nearly twice the size in membership of the current one. And one thing I am concerned about is, have we got somebody who can front that? And if I can tack on another little bit, please. Um, I think that it's, it's a great idea. I think the name is not particularly important, but I think we've suffered by being known as microlites. And I think it's time that particular word was dropped. People think that that's a kite with a lawnmower engine underneath it, and it isn't. So I think we ought to move on with the name. I used to fly a kite with a lawnmower engine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just to an answer the... I absolutely agree with you about the um, microlite word, and I think Rob is fully in agreement with that as well. I, I'm neutral. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm the last person who should uh, kind of dictate on that. So, again, it's a member's question and a, and a member's view. Um, I think as far as the organization is concerned, I'm confident, actually, that within the BMAA and the LA, we absolutely have the right people uh, to go forward. Uh, it's not like they would be unsupported. Uh, the likes of Rob and myself and the rest of the directors, both in the LA and the BMA, are on hand to make sure that uh, this is going to be a success. So I don't think you should worry about that. Later on down the stream, we need to obviously to talk about what that organization will be doing in five, ten years, plan for that. Um, you know, in five or ten years' time, quite a lot of people uh, might not be around any longer, and we have to think about bringing new blood into the organization. But... Uh, at the LA, we've already started to do that. We've made some appointments in the engineering team, uh, young, bright people who I hope is gonna, are gonna make a real difference to the way we, we go forward and learn from the people they're working with, but actually take us onto that next step. Okay. Uh, Adrian's got another question. Uh, sorry, hang on, Adrian, just a second. 
Um, the membership thing, there's about 8,000 LAA, about 4,000 BMAA. We've got an overlap of about 700, so it'll be about 11-ish thousand. Compare that to FF Plume, which is the French organization, 17 and a half thousand. The Czechs, hugely bigger than us. The word microlite, um, I think, I, I said it's split. Some people love the fact that they fly microlites. The name of the new organization wouldn't have the word microlite in, quite clearly. But it wouldn't stop you flying a microlite if you wanted to. What else would you call it, though? Because it was one of my questions was if we call, call it the, the People's Flying Association. I fly a People's Flying Plane. The Czechs call it sports equipment because that way it falls out of their uh, government regulation for aircraft. You could then choose whether or not you call it a microlite. The move for 600 kilo opt-out would call these things microlites, 600 kilo microlites. So the name's not going to disappear, but the name in this new organization's title certainly would. Adrian. Yeah, I was just going to make a, a comment about the name. Um, the BMAA first started out as the British Minimum Aircraft Association, of course. Um, I was at the first meeting where they decided to change the name to Microlite because we couldn't use ultralight, which would have been the obvious choice. Everybody else uses the term ultralight. We couldn't use it because the LAA had that term. Uh, their aircraft were known as ultralights at the time. So we had to go for Microlites. So now that the LAA aren't using ultralights, maybe we should uh, think of that in part of the, t in part of the title. One at the back there, Michael. If you fly a two ton plane, would you be happy calling it an ultralight? Oh, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> not wearing the name, but uh, it would have those four letters. Yes, sir. Uh, gentlemen, hi. My name is Paul Marnie. I'm a member of the BMAA, the LAA, and also BHPA. I'm on the FSC for everything to do with power, SSDR, paramotors, etc. I haven't really got a question. I've just got a statement which I think is an absolute brilliant idea if you two merge. It should have been done long ago. I've got a few examples of things that have merged that are really successful. The um, hang gliders and the paragliders were all at each other's throats years ago, and now we've got the BHPA with about 8,000 members. Everybody's living very happily ever after. You've got um, Michel Carne started a magazine called Paramotor, and Bob Drury's writing a magazine called Cross Country for the paragliders, and certainly, and then they realized there was lots of cross fertilization to be had, lots of um, interest in both camps, and now there's one magazine which deals with both camps and everybody's very happy. Um, with regards premises, um, I think if you looked at the BHPA and the BGA, they've got a really good setup, a really modern, smart office in Leicester, BHPA upstairs, BGA downstairs, everybody shares canteen facilities, toilets, and everybody gets on well. I mean, I know there's probably a little bit more of a difference between the two disciplines, but you know, there's an uh, example. And um, as for name, I mean, I think the Americans have got it right. Light sport aircraft. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more? Uh, hi, Richard Pike, LAA member. Uh, my question is, I've always been puzzled by the sort of idiocies in the licensing and medicals, uh, worthiness, that these two different worlds seem to have two different sets of rules in these areas and probably a number of other areas as well. Now, I appreciate those are imposed from outside, they're not internal rules. Is there scope for the merger leading to a simplification, a uh, rationalization of the rules that apply to both um, areas of, 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 of flying? Yes, I, um, I'm aware of the differences you've, you've raised. Um, and I think this is a this would be the perfect opportunity as a combined organization to have those discussions with the regulator to find out what we could change going forward because um, not only would it make more sense, it would actually lower the barrier to people coming into our sport and enjoying what we enjoy. And, and for me, that's absolutely critical, getting that flow of people coming in. Um, the regulator, I'm sure, doesn't want to invent lots of com complex rules, but we have to bear in mind that at the moment, we are obviously ruled by EASA rules, but who knows what will happen going forward. Um, things don't change quickly, but again, if we're together talking to the regulator, I'm confident that if there is a sensible way forward, which is easier, simpler for everybody, then I'm sure we'll drive towards that goal. No one wants it to be complicated. That, that, is, that, that is basically anti what we're trying to achieve here. 
A good example of that might be the EV97 as a microlight and an EV97 as a light plane. Uh, one of the hours counts in your logbook and the other one doesn't, yep. which has always struck me as being completely daft. Yep. And also, flexi wings. An hour in a flexi wing takes a lot of skill. You're doing everything the same. Why does the hour not count? So there are lots of things we can do in that direction, I think. Indeed, yeah. And I'm sure that you know when time comes, and we do have that single voice conversation with the regulator, I'm sure you'll all come forward with examples where we could do, do things bit, uh, you know, in a different way, much more easy, much more simpler, clarity throughout. And then actually selling the business of aviation becomes so much easier, doesn't it? So, yeah, absolutely. Agree with that. We've probably got time for one more question. Is that sure. okay with you guys? Yeah, of course. Yep. One more question at the back. Hello, uh, Sean McDonald, a member of both organizations. Um, recently, the BMAA have struggled to find council members uh, when it comes to elections and things. How do you see a merged organization protecting that, what I call our side, the BMAA side, in a joint council when we haven't found enough council members for ourselves recently? I've struggled, seem to have struggled to find members to be council members. Shall I do it? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Rob in a minute, but my take on that comment is, uh, yeah, it is, it is difficult um, uh, getting people to come forward, but initially when the two organizations come together, we actually between us have plenty of people to uh, be on that senior uh, governance group. And then over time, obviously, as people uh, decide that uh, they want to retire or whatever, we then will have opportunities for people to come forward and join what will become this joint governance. But initially, it'll be 50-50, so 50% of the current LAA, uh, or sorry, 50% of the new governance will be current LAA uh, directors, 50% will be the current um, executive at the National Council of the BMAA, and then over time we'll see how that runs, but ultimately as a joint organization, we'll select a much, amongst a much wider number of people who those uh, new directors will be. Uh, but both organizations do struggle a little bit to uh, ask people to come forward, and I'm not quite sure why it seems to be so difficult. We'd obviously want to make it highly inclusive. Anybody uh, would come into that organization with whatever background <coughs> and contribute something to the running of our joint as uh, association. Um, you don't have to have been on a board. You don't have to have served necessarily uh, in a company or anything like that. What we're looking for is people who are passionate about aviation, can make their points clearly, and help to influence the direction of a joint association going forward. Yeah, it's a good question, thank you. It's good feedback. Um, we initially, at the moment, we're thinking for a period of time, it may be 12 months, it may be two years, we haven't quite worked it out yet. We have exactly what Tim says, a joint board um, so half from BMAA, half from LAA, which is good for us because uh, we would be, I would say, a smaller organization, smaller in, in members. But of course, that leads to a crunch point at the end of that hiatus where there are two-thirds ex-LAA, one-third ex-BMAA, and those specific interests might come through in elections. Yep, live with it. Hopefully, we would have made enough progress by then, or we would have sorted out the, the strategy, the system, that there may be specific posts. So you may want to become the council member for whatever it might be type of flying. And then there would be less competition between the old two organizations and actually a competition just for that one position itself. It's detail we haven't yet got into. We have touched upon it. There are different governance, different governance systems. You have vice presidents, we don't. Um, so this is all stuff that has to be put into the washing machine in the next eight weeks and then brought out hopefully sparkly clean. But thank you for the feedback. Okay, well, thank you very, very much, first of all, to you guys for coming along and uh, expressing your views. Excellent questions, if I might say, unusual in things like this, so well done to that. And excellent answers, so big round of applause, I think, is appropriate for Tim and uh, Rob. Thanks. <laughs>